Beautiful Sea by Laurie Haskins Howron. On a fine September day more than 200 years ago, a boy named John Chapman was born. Some day he would be famous, but he would be known by a different name, Johnny Appleseed. Johnny grew up in Massachusetts in a small crowded house. He liked to take long walks in the woods where it was calm and quiet. He liked to feel the sun on his face and the earth under his bare feet. When Johnny turned 18, he took a very long walk, more than 400 miles. He brought along food, supplies, and a sack of apple seeds. Johnny had an idea. Settlers were starting to go west in covered wagons, looking for new places to live. Johnny figured that they would want apples to eat and press into cider, but there were no apple trees out west. Even if the settlers planted seeds, it would take years for trees to sprout and grow fruit. Why not give the settlers a head start? Johnny reached Pennsylvania. Near a river, he found a patch of land with rich soil and plenty of sunlight, a perfect place for growing apple trees. He planted some seeds. Then he built a sturdy fence so that when the new seedlings came up, deer and rabbits wouldn't eat them. It was his first nursery. Johnny planted more seeds, thousands of them, across Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana. He, wa he walked and he walked, going from nursery to nursery to tend his trees. Meanwhile, the settlers came. Sure enough, they wanted apples. They were happy to pay Johnny a few cents apiece for seedlings. Sometimes he even gave them away to families who were down on their luck. People spread the word about Johnny and his apple trees. That's how he got his nickname. Have you met Johnny Appleseed? He's mighty kind, people said. Mighty peculiar, too. It was true. For one thing, Johnny looked strange. He wore old ragged pants. He cut holes in coffee sacks to make his shirts. He still didn't wear shoes. By now, folks claimed his feet were so tough, a snake's fangs couldn't prick them. People even swore they saw Johnny wearing a tin pot for a hat and then cook his dinner in it. Johnny's diet was another thing people couldn't get over. He didn't like to hurt animals, so he wouldn't eat meat. Not one bite. He filled up on corn mush, potatoes, and nuts instead. And when night fell, Johnny liked to sleep outdoors. He'd settle into a hollow log or stretch out on a pile of leaves. He didn't seem to worry about the bears and panthers that roamed the woods. It was almost as if Johnny was a forest creature himself. Johnny might have been odd, but he was friendly. He got along with just about everyone he met. Native Americans shared their trails with him. They showed him, showed him which berries were safe to eat and how to make medicine from leaves and roots. Settlers invited Johnny into their cabins and asked him to tell stories. Sometimes he read from the Bible. Good news, fresh from heaven, he'd say. Other times, he acted out his own wild adventures. People retold Johnny's tales and made up new ones, too. As the years went by, the tales grew taller and taller. Did you know Johnny can thaw ice with his bare feet? He has a tame wolf that follows him around like a puppy. Once he tricked ten woodsmen into, chop into a chopping contest, they cleared a whole acre of land for a nursery. The stories wound their way east and west and back again. So did Johnny. He traveled hundreds of miles a year, making new nurseries and tending old ones. Every so often he rode a horse or paddled a canoe. 
But most of the time he walked, and he walked, and he walked. He kept this up for nearly 50 years. One day, when he was 70 years old, Johnny walked through a snowstorm to fix a fence around some of his trees. Afterward, he fell ill and died. Johnny was sorely missed, but he was not forgotten, and neither was his great idea. As settlers moved farther and farther west, they carried along apple seeds, just the way Johnny had, and planted apple trees of their own. Today, apples grow in every state in America. And at the back, it talks a little bit about Johnny and his apple seeds. It says, The apples that grew on Johnny's trees were mostly spitters. That meant they were too sour to eat. Settlers used them to make cider and vinegar. Johnny's worn-out clothes made him look poor, but he wasn't. When he died, he owned over a thousand acres of land. There's a monument for Johnny in Indiana, near the spot where he died. The stone lists both of his names, John Chapman and Johnny Appleseed, and other underneath it says he lived for others. Johnny probably walked more than a hundred thousand miles in his lifetime. <music>